ciao. Alrighty, these are our front brakes, and let's see if we can get that light to stay. This here is our brake wear sensor. This brake pad wear sensor is broken, but these pads were due to be replaced anyway. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to punch these pins out. That is going to loosen this spring. Then we're going to use the friction of the pads being in the rotor to push the pads out so that you can squish the um, pistons back into the caliper. And then we also want to remember to break this T30 loose while the brake pads are still um, holding on to the rotor. So we're actually going to do that first. Uh, if you don't have an impact, this should only be seven foot pounds, but it should have Loctite on it. So um, I either use a um, impact driver, screwdriver type, or an actual impact to remove those. I'm just using a punch and a hammer. Push down on the spring to pull the bottom pin out first, then the top pin should come out there relatively easily. One out. And now that that one's out, this one should come right out. Okay, so we're actually going to clean these up with a wire brush before putting them back in. The set screw is a T30. If you don't have an impact gun, you could use an impact driver and a hammer. This is what it looks like to remove the sensor. If your sensor is not broken, you should just be able to remove it and plug the new one directly in after replacing the pads and rotors. Now I want to spread the pads apart. So, get in here. Now in this case, we're not too worried about marring the rotor because we're replacing the rotors today. But if you were worried about that, you would want to be very con conscious of where you're pressing and what tools you're using to retract the caliper. Now this sensor is completely broken off its plastic holder. It's supposed to live right here. Um, so we're going to do our best to fix it and put it back. Okay, so that kind of just pulls out. Great. Remove the eight millimeter bolt holding the sensor bracket. Next, you're going to remove the two 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. If you have an impact driver, you can get the lower one off, but for the upper one, I used a breaker bar and leveraged with my foot. To the right, which means I need to go to the left. I'm pushing the breaker bar with my foot from the front of the car toward the back of the car. Make sure you don't let the caliper hang from the brake lines or from the wires. It's good practice to use a bungee cord or bailing wire to secure the caliper to the strut while you work.
Remove and replace the rotor. It is easier to get the caliper bracket bolts in if you put the set screw in first. Make sure the set screw has Loctite on it. Okay, you gotta make sure that you line up that hole so that you can put the holding screw back in. Oh. Okay, everything gets Loctite, so we're gonna put some Loctite on this. Tighten the set screw to just past hand tight or five to seven foot pounds. Tight on these guys. These get torqued to 85 foot pounds or 115 Newton meters. Antesis on there. After I slid the first pad in, I had to put the old pad in on the other side to be able to expand the caliper a bit more, then the new pad slid right in. Those need to be 100% flush. So the sensor plugs into this little hole. So we're going to start this. And you should hear a little click. And then it's going to plug right back into here. And you would secure this on here. I'm going to fix this. This is what the repaired sensor bracket looks like. And the 8mm bolt should be secured just past hand tight at 5 to 7 foot pounds. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe below so we can help other people find this video. I offer automotive education and consulting, so if you need help completing this job, my contact information is in the description below.